Frequency, podcasts that resonate. How would you like to go into space? Two, one, zero, all engines running. Well, that used to be a pretty ridiculous question to ask someone. Since the first human entered orbit in 1961, being an astronaut was something that was reserved for a very select few people with the, quote, right stuff. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But no longer. Now, going into space is open to everyone, so long as you have enough money to buy a ticket. Today on The Big Story, we're talking to a Torontonian who has done just that. A man who's going into space today. Joining me is Henry Wolfond, who is the chairman and CEO of Bayshore Capital in Toronto. Henry, thanks for being with us on The Big Story. Before we get to your incredible journey today, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm uh, a lawyer by profession, but... Ever since I was a teenager, I have pursued a passion for aviation. I got my pilot's license when I was 16. Uh, I progressed through various ratings. And today I'm an airline transport pilot. I continue to moonlight as a professional pilot, flying air ambulance flights, organ retrieval flights, and occasional uh, business charter flights. It's a passion that has never left me. It never gets old. And uh, that's what I'd like to introduce myself as and you can soon add astronaut to that resume of yours you're going up into orbit today right i will be going to space on blue origins new shepherd rocket with uh, five other astronauts we'll be going 100 kilometers above the surface of the earth into the blackness of space out of the reach of gravity and uh yeah it's an experience that uh started in me when I was a young child, watching Gemini missions and Apollo missions, obviously Neil Armstrong's first step on the moon, July 20th, 1969, and and beyond. So how long ago did you sign up for this and put your name down, buy the ticket? When I saw William Shatner do this flight in October of 2021, I started, you know, within a few days making inquiries of uh, Blue Origin, and I signed up in... I'm going to say January of 2022. And how much did you pay for it? I'm under NDA for that. I really do want to talk about why you're doing it. I don't want to harp on the cost, but of course the listeners will immediately want to know how much did this guy pay? Did do, Can you give me a ballpark? I mean, we're talking more than I, 20 minutes. Really, I'm really under a strict NDA on that, uh, Richard. So uh, it's it's sort of off limits. I can pivot again to another but, but What if I if I want to buy a ticket, I, go, I approach them and then we I sign an NDA and we talk about the price? How does that work? I think that's pretty much how it would work. You So the process of talking to them, it, it took three or four interactions and phone calls before we got to that discussion. Can you tell me, is it a set price or is it negotiable? I can't tell you anything. Okay. But I couldn't afford it, though, basically, as a lowly radio reporter. Let, 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 let's talk more about why I'm doing it, where I came from, and... Uh... Well, okay, let me ask you this. Are were they more apt to give you a seat because uh, of the fact that you do hold an aviation pilot's license? Did that help? Are you going to be more in charge than the other astronauts on this mission? The vehicle's it, fairly autonomous. Uh, if by being in charge, there's very limited uh, functions that the passengers can do. I think there's a button for a fire suppression system. I'll probably be be the person sitting beside that. I mean, to me, obviously, the greatest thing would be to float around and feel the microgravity. Will you have that opportunity to take off your seatbelt and do that? Absolutely. You get uh, four to five minutes of weightlessness. Interesting as you say that, I've I've spoken to a couple of astronauts, NASA astronauts, and people who have done this before. And yeah, the feeling of weightlessness is something that will be really cool. I recently did one of those zero gravity parabolic flights to kind of get that experience. But what any of the experienced astronauts tell me is look out the window. Look out the window, take in that view from the blackness of space at the curvature of the Earth. If you you saw William Shatner's flight when he came back, he was mesmerized. I think a lot of people take it as a negative, but what impacted him the most was the fragility of this planet that we all share. All of humanity has to preserve and protect the 
uh, environment that we live within, this little dot, this speck of dust in the vastness of the universe. You hear this from astro like more veteran NASA astronauts too, when they're up there, they say, I don't see any borders. You know, it, we're all in this together. It's one tiny little globe. You, you, you mean, you, you, you hear this time and time again that people have a different perspective on life after they go up. I mean, are you expecting that too? I absolutely am. And, you know, when I, being, becoming an astronaut going to outer space is something I dreamed of as a child. And as when I signed up for this in 2021 or started exploring it in 2021, that, that might have been the sole purpose of this mission, to fulfill that dream. As the date got closer, and in particular after the horrific events and the attack on Jews on, November, on October 7th, 2023, I started to realize from what you just said, from that height, from outer space, looking at the planet, you don't see frontiers, you don't see borders, the things that divide us, the things that we hate about each other here on Earth don't exist. Now, I also understand they're letting you bring a bag of items up into space with you. They allow you to take uh, personal items that will then be certified as having flown to space when you get back. And I didn't expect there to be a Taylor Swift angle to this, but there's a big one. I mean, you're bringing Taylor Swift bracelets that your granddaughter Shelby made into space with you, right? Six-year-old granddaughter. She was lucky enough to go to the Taylor Swift concert last week and uh, was absolutely thrilled with that and thrilled that these bracelets that she wore to the concert will be flying to space with me. So Shelby went to the Taylor Swift show in Toronto, wore these bracelets, and now they're going into space. That's pretty wild. It is pretty wild. It doesn't stop there. You're also bringing some other things with you. Little mementos that my children have given me, Pokemon cards that they tell me will have greater value once they have been certified as flown in space. Are you scared? I mean, this is not without risk. You, we, you know that. It's not without risk. You know, it's not something that I never think about. You're sitting on top of 50 tons of uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, and other volatile chemicals that are going to propel this vehicle hundreds of thousands of feet above the atmosphere. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's a pervasive feeling. It, it's certainly overpowered by the desire to have this experience, to see the Earth from that height. Did anyone try and talk you out of it, though? No, no one. People always ask, how does your wife feel about this? Yeah. So my wife, Rochelle, and I have known each other for, uh, we met in 1979. Maybe you can do the math for me. Uh, we've been married 45 years. Uh, I was flying before I met her. I took her in small airplanes uh, when we were dating, and she knows if it ever came down to an ultimatum of talking me out of something like this, I don't know where it would go. So how much training do you need and do they give you before you climb aboard this Blue Origin rocket today from Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and blast into outer space? There's two and a half days of intensive training really to get acclimated, to get prepared for the experience, to talk about some of the things we've talked about, the risks and, uh, and remote possibilities. I mean, did they ask you any like psychological questions? Was there, did they try and weed out any potential issues with any candidates here? I can't speak for other candidates. Uh, I think they look at your resume, they look at your qualifications, you give them your aspirational statement, why this is something you want to do. Um, and I don't, in my case, they didn't have any further questions. Or it's, this is how easy it is to, well, money aside, whatever it is, this is how easy it is to go into space right now. That's amazing, isn't it? It is pretty amazing. And I, my hope is that uh, space tourism is, is only going to expand from here. As I said, you know, making a, I, I feel I'm making a contribution to that. Uh, there are larger and larger vessels. Maybe within my lifetime, there'll be an opportunity to travel with 20 or 30 people in an orbital vehicle where you can go around the Earth and spend a couple of days in space. Not a meager price, but a relatively affordable price. There are people paying to go to the space station right now. I mean, are you dreaming of something bigger like that? I'm dreaming. I came up with a line that kind of paraphrases and turns around Neil Armstrong's immortal words when he set foot on the moon. And I say... To people, this is one giant leap for me, and hopefully one small step 
in turning the tide on anti-Semitism. I'd like to reach out to allies of the Jewish community, people who recognize that things are not moving in the right direction in terms of tolerance and acceptance and the values that Canadians hold dear. Watch the mission. Join me in this fight. And I look forward to talking to you when I get back. Henry today will be on Blue Origin's ninth space tourism flight. Three years ago, a then 90-year-old William Shatner became the oldest person in space flying aboard this very rocket. Shatner was moved to tears after he landed. What you have given me is the most profound experience I can imagine. uh, I'm so filled with emotion about what just happened. I, I just, it's extraordinary. With Shatner on that flight was Jeff Bezos himself, who developed this rocket and this company. This is how he described his experience into space. On how it felt, oh my God! (laughs) My expectations were high and they were dramatically exceeded. The, uh, the, we were talking about this a little bit uh, in the car ride on the way back and I, I don't know, the 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 zero G piece may have been one of the biggest surprises because it felt so normal. It felt so like almost like we were as humans evolved to be in that environment, which I know is impossible, but it felt so serene and peaceful and the floating. It's actually much nicer than being in full one gravity. Um, uh, it's a very pleasurable experience just from the sheer, just the way it feels, the tactfulness of it. Uh, that it, you know, the the most profound piece of it for me was looking out at the Earth and looking at the Earth's atmosphere. Every astronaut, everybody who's been up into space, they say this that it changes them, and they look at it and they're kind of amazed and, and awestruck by the Earth and its beauty, but also by its fragility. And I can vouch for that. Um, when I look out, you know, when we're sitting in this room and when we're driving our cars and we're moving around the planet. In our normal ways, the atmosphere is so gigantic. You know, we're these tiny little things, and the planet, the atmosphere is so big. But when you get up above it, what you see is it's actually incredibly thin. It's this tiny little fragile thing. And as we move about the planet, we're damaging it. And, you know, so that is, um, you know, that's, that, that's a very profound. It's one thing to recognize that intellectually. It's another thing to actually see with your own eyes how fragile it really is and that was amazing now this is something blue origin 2 tries to build as reusable and carbon free i guess as much as a rocket can be the company claims 99 percent of the capsule and the booster and the engine are reused there's also some commercial applications for this both blue origin and elon musk's spacex were recently selected by nasa to build an astronaut base on the moon in the coming years You, too, can buy a ticket to blast off into space aboard Blue Origin. The company doesn't make the cost public. Reports, though, have pegged it around one and a quarter million U.S. dollars a seat. A reminder about a great new listening experience for you. You can listen anytime to the Big Story podcast on Seeker. That's S-E-E-K-E-R. I'm Richard Southern. Thanks for listening.